All right. Let's look at our last three points on making plans for 2022. And this passage is about Paul just, it's, it, to me it's kind of like, this is a different kind of passage. And, and there's also an uh, uh, explanation in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, um, Paul was talking why he didn't get to uh, come to them, visit the Corinthians again, and um, and God gives us passages that are not just doctrinal, but are very personal, and it's all practical. All scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable. And some things will be clearly more prof uh, profitable for doctrine. Some, you know, really lends itself to rebuke when you preach it or you read it. Uh, it's like, well, this is rebuking me. And, you know, uh, doctrine, reproof, and correction. And then there's some that, like this, I just like instruction in righteousness, doing things right. Instruction in righteousness. This must be one of those instruction in righteousness. Just make, when you're making plans and you're making plans to serve God, follow God, everything uh, Paul is doing here is upfront, transparent. Showing flexibility, working with brothers and sisters in Christ, and just spelling it out. And it's another amazing passage of scripture. Let's pray, and uh, we will we'll read down through to, let's see, we'll read down through to verse 9 after we pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this passage of scripture and yeah, pray that uh, we might be able to take the principles, the lessons from it and, and apply them to our lives and that it be a help for us, especially as we make plans and work and family and church and, and different things. We pray that um, we remember your word and pray that your Holy Spirit would teach us now, and that your Holy Spirit would guide me. In Jesus' name, amen. So, we'll begin in verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as that ye you know your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye, upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God has prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. When I come, whomsoever ye shall approve by your letters, then will I send to bring your liberality unto Jerusalem. And if it be meet that I go also, they shall go with me. Now I will come unto you when I shall pass through Macedonia, for I do pass through Macedonia, and it may be that I will abide, yea, in winter with you, that ye may bring me on my journey whithersoever I go. For I will not say, see you now by the way, but I trust to tarry a while with you, if the Lord permit. But I will tarry at Ephesus until Pentecost, for a great door and effectual is opened unto me, and there are many adversaries. And that great door and effectual doesn't seem to, like, how did, that, how did that all of a sudden come up? How does that work in here? Because Paul's not sure, you know, all these things that we uh, have looked at. So how can you have a great door and effectual opened if you're not sure what's going to happen. Well, 
the ministry, living for the Lord, is um, such a wonderful thing that no matter what you go through, you still have an opportunity to witness for him and serve him. So we looked at, uh, concerning making plans, we said, number one, make plans to serve God in spite of uncertainties. Number two, make plans in light of the truth of the resurrection, that this life is not all there is, and we've got the great promise, this corruptible must put on incorruption, this mortal must put on immortality, and um, so don't just make mere mortal plans, make plans that fit into eternity and that will count for eternity. Then number three, make plans to be steadfast and unmovable. If you're not steadfast and unmovable, then the devil's going to take his opportunity to get you while you aren't being faithful. Number four, make plans to be always abounding in the work of the Lord. So you want to just not muddle through. We were, uh, you know that little song, uh, maybe you don't know the little song, but, uh, you know, have yourself a merry little Christmas. And it goes uh, uh, something about somehow, I shouldn't be mentioning this song, so it's just a worldly song, but it's uh, somehow you're going to have to muddle through. That's what we were saying uh, when everybody was sick right before Christmas. It's like, yeah, we're just going to have to muddle through. Well, I mean, that's a shame. Uh, but we were just joking around because it, you look to the Lord Jesus and exalt the Lord Jesus. And you don't just muddle through. You praise him and... Uh, you don't just make plans to do, oh, do a little bit for the Lord and get by. No, you, you plan to abound in his work, to be faithful and to grow and serve however you can. You abound in the work of the Lord. And lastly this morning, we said make plans to give faithfully and liberally and that's what this whole passage is revolving around, getting that gift, getting that gift uh, to Jerusalem. Number six, number six, new territory. As you make plans for 2022, uh, make plans thinking about others. Make plans thinking about others. This whole, as Paul is trying to plan this out, picking up the offering and bringing it to Jerusalem and who's going to bring it and if he goes with them to bring it and when he goes through Macedonia and uh, where he's going to, if he's going to, uh, if he goes through, he wants to spend the winter there and um, all these things. But it all revolves, it all revolves around people. It's all involving people. And then he talks about Timothy. Uh, now if Timothy comes, see that he be with you without fear. He talks about Apollos. And he works in at the end here about the example of Stephanus and how they've addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. But as Paul is writing about uh, this plan, he's making plans. He is transparent. It's obvious that he is flexible. He is being uh, decent and orderly. He's being upfront. He's being considerate. And you want to uh, work out your plans thinking about others. Work out your plans thinking about others. I was just reading and, and I'm excited about, I was just studying the life of Laban, the life of Laban, and I'd like to 
preach on that at some point, but because uh, Laban, Laban deceived Jacob over and over again, and Jacob decides it's time to move on, and so Jacob doesn't just tell Leah and Rachel, hey, we're out of here. He has a little family meeting and takes Leah and Rachel out in the field and says, you know, your father hasn't treated us very well. And they say, yeah, what inheritance do we have with our father? He really doesn't want to take care of us at all, and he hasn't been good. And they, they come to an agreement that, yeah, we're out of here. Uh, we're leaving. But it was, uh, you know, sometimes you hear husbands that think that, well, I'm the head of the household, and I just say what's going on. If my wife doesn't like it, then too bad for her. And Apostle Paul here you can just see the whole passage is, uh, it's almost too nice. It's almost like too nice. Well, if, you, if this won't work, then and this does, and we'll see what will happen, and we'll see how this will go together. And uh, It's just very, very flexible and considerate. Uh, some people have their plans, and no one is going to inter interrupt them. Well, if it's a plan, you know, serving God, following God, you don't want anybody or anything to interrupt them. But if you're just talking about a plan or what you're going to do in your work or your family, um, you know, if God wants to interrupt them, he'll interrupt them. And if you're going to... Uh, Another thing that Paul does here uh, in making plans, and because we've tied this passage into uh, following the will of God, is he's not forcing, he's not forcing the situation. When he says, if the Lord permit, you know, he's not forcing the situation. Just like, remember, we studied that when Abraham's servant goes to find the bride, for Isaac, he doesn't force the situation. It's pretty obvious to him that everything's lining up and, and uh, Rebecca is the, the girl. But he goes to the family, spells it all out before them, and then they agree to it, but then you know, it's more like, a, what do you think? Are you agreed? He doesn't force it. And then they even end up asking Rebecca, what do you think about it? That's the way to make plans. That's the way to do God's work because we're not following man. We're seeking to have God lead our steps. And what's that uh, verse? That, well, that actually come up in the next point. We'll look at a verse. Uh, but it's obvious in this passage of Scripture, Paul is thinking about uh, everyone. He's thinking about the saints in Jerusalem. He's thinking about the saints in, in Corinth. He's thinking about the saints in Macedonia. He's thinking about Timothy. He's thinking about Apollos. He's thinking about, uh, Stephanus has set an example about being uh, serving the saints and addicting himself to the ministry. And it's all... Uh, it's just so clear that in his plans, he is thinking about others. Uh, so many of the stories of the Lord Jesus, and we're sure that the Lord Jesus had a plan. He, well, we know he came to do his Father's will. But so many of the stories throughout in the Gospels are uh, spontaneous, 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 spontaneous. Uh, Spontaneous. What is that? Anyway, they happen like, okay, these people, they all gather together to hear me preach. Why don't we feed them? Don't send them away. Feed them. Okay, Jesus is traveling along, and 
what's this woman doing touching my, you know, somebody touched me. And disciples come to the Lord and say, you know, all these people out here and they want you to bless their children. And it's just so many things that, uh, and it's that way uh, in our lives day to day that things pop up and we've got to be thinking, it just can't be my plan. What am I going to do? It's got to be, if we are making plans, uh, we're making pl if we're making plans for 2022, we're making plans to serve the Lord, uh, to abound in his work, and, and all our plans have got to be uh, working together with our family, your wife or your husband, and uh, your church family. Uh, just Paul just sets an example here of planning things so that everybody is, you know, it's all going to work out for the Lord's work, uh, and it's going to uh, be decently and orderly with everybody. Um, Paul, this is this amazing passage of scripture. And um, just that concern. Make plans thinking about others. Businesses today aren't doing that. They've got their agenda. Businesses today are not putting people first. I, this last week, when was this, Heath, Heath was with me, my wife had like a stack of Christmas cards. It's like her second stack. Uh, she puts out these tons of Christmas cards. Yeah, talk about thinking of others. But she had, okay, this stack is ready. So I thought, I'm going to call the post office and ask them if, she said, you know, I'm trying to be thoughtful. Would you rather have me bring them in to the post office? Or do you, is it okay just to throw them in the box? Because um, I can't remember what the postmaster, when I worked at the post office, it almost seems like she preferred bringing somebody, when people brought them in, and they had them all stacked, whatever. But so I just wanted to ask the postmaster, and we were headed to Lincoln. So I called, I called the Lincoln post office. Do you call the post office lately? I don't know if if Lee, uh, maybe you have their number direct. But I called, you know, I Google Lincoln post office. I called the number. You know how it is with almost every business today is, please listen to the list of, you know, do you want to mail a parcel? Do you want to mail a letter? Do you need posters? You on and on and on. And I just want to say, for their benefit, not for my benefit, for their benefit, I just have a simple question. You want me to bring it in or throw it in the box? You know, I shouldn't get frustrated about these little things. But you know that you know how you hear people talk all the time is today the electrician won't call you back or the plumber won't call you back or whatever. And Paul here in making plans and he's serving the Lord. He's writing it all out, and he is, uh, his plans, he's making plans, and it's all thinking about people, being considerate of people. And God help us as Christians to not get the worldly business mentality that, well, this will save time, and uh, this will save money if we don't have to talk to those people, if we don't have to answer the questions, if we don't have to deal with them, well, for the Christian, it is, hey, be kind. I'm going to be kind and considerate, and maybe I can, at some point, witness to this person, point them to the Lord. 
Paul is so, so considerate. Uh, so uh, make plans thinking about others. Number seven. Number seven. Make plans trusting the Lord to work everything out according to his will. And then just wait and see what happens. Paul's got the plan. Uh, the church at Galatia is in on it. And um, obviously that there's many that are that are in on this. And he is just, they've, they've got the plan. They're pushing ahead with the plan. But there's things they got to wait for God to work out. And so that, verse 7, when it says, if the Lord permit, if the Lord permit. So there's a time of waiting and trusting. And we know that Proverbs 3 says, trust in the Lord with all thy heart, lean not unto thy own understanding, in all thy ways acknowledge him, he shall direct thy paths. Uh, Proverbs 16.9, you know Proverbs 16.9? Let's look at Proverbs 16.9. says, a man's heart deviseth his way. You know, the Lord puts things in your, heart to, uh, in your heart or you get things that you really want to do and pray about it. Sp uh, you know, Spread it, spread it out before the Lord, and then what happens? It says, but the Lord directeth his steps. That's exactly what's happening with Paul, is that they decided they wanted to bring a gift to Jerusalem, and now they need the Lord to direct all the steps. You know, direct all the steps along the way. And so Paul's writing, writing to the Corinthians and he's, you know, telling this is what, well, this is what's going on, but that's the way it is, is you ask the Lord to direct your steps. Back to 1 Corinthians 16. Last thing in making plans, making plans for 2022. Number eight, make plans realizing God has given us an open door of great and effectual opportunities. Sometimes it doesn't seem like it. We know the Bible says that this know that in the last days perilous times have come, then it gives us a whole list of all uh, the bad characteristics of the day. Men shall be lovers of their own selves. And the Bible tells us evil men shall wax worse and worse. And we can see things happen that these weren't happening 20, 30 years ago. Uh, pretty obvious that things are worse. But all scripture, all scripture, it's it's profitable. It's true. It it applies. It applies that God has given each one of us a ministry to do, and God is with us. And if we think we've got it bad, let's review a little bit of what Paul had to. What Paul dealt with, if you look in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, because Paul says, For a great door and effectual is open unto me, and there are many adversaries. Many adversaries. Well, we might think we have adversaries, and we do. Uh, the devil's at work today to blind the minds of those that uh, sh should believe. Uh, all should all all men should come to the Lord, but God has given us a job to do, and we look what look what Paul 
just as a reminder, a reminder of what Paul went through. And Paul says, "Does this great door and effectual open unto me?" Paul says in Second Corinthians eleven, he says, beginning in verse twenty-three. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. He's saying I speak as a fool because he's saying I'm, I'm boasting. They forced him. They forced him to give his credentials. They forced him to explain himself because they were saying, you know, you're not an apostle. Your your speech is weak. Um, they were belittling him, and so the Lord allowed him to give his credentials here, which may sound like boasting, but it is uh, God wanted Paul to show us what he, what he suffered in the ministry so that down the road we would think, man, I really don't have it so hard. To, I mean, clearly we don't have it very hard. Uh, the time may come. We face persecution. But here, look what it says. Um, are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. In labors more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequent, in deaths off. Of the Jews, five times received I forty stripes, save one. Imagine the scars this man had on his body. If you get five times that you're ripped with a whip in 40 stripes. Thrice was I beaten with rods. Once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep, in journeyings often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. Cold. I hate being cold. Cold. I would start at all these beats. Something I think, man, I think I'd rather take a beat and then to sit in prison like Paul did. He says, make sure you bring my cloak. Can you imagine sitting in prison day after day, just shivering, miserable, cold, and uh, cold and nakedness. Beside those things that are without, that, that which cometh up on me daily, the care of all the churches. And Paul, this Paul is the man who says, a great door and effectual is open unto me. And there are many adversaries. As you make plans for the new year, just be positive, optimistic in the Lord. The Lord can use it. The Lord's left us here. He's left us here just to stand for him, to shine for him and to try to reach souls for him. And it's a great honor that the Lord wants to use us. It is a wonderful thing to be an ambassador for the Lord Jesus Christ. And just to keep at it, keep going. And here we go into 2022. May the Lord lead us and guide us and use us. Uh, let's pray.